so happy to share this panel with all of you distinguished ladies. Um, with regard to Munich conference, then uh, I would like to quickly give you a brief story uh, what happened two years ago in Munich when I was uh, there as well. And uh, as you may know, every foreign minister goes there with its, it, uh, with its uh, particular agenda. And in my agenda, one line was to get permission to give uh, lethal weapons to uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, by that time, Estonia already had uh, delivered uh, javelins uh, to Ukraine because uh, there was a uh, high, um, high risk in air that uh, war may uh, happen in every minute. And uh, this Munich conference uh, two years ago took place uh, just a week before, uh, or even less than a week uh, before the war, full-fledged war started in, in Ukraine. And uh, of course, uh, we didn't get this permission by that time, by not by right time. We got this permission uh, to give howitzers to uh, Ukraine, for example, on the 27th of February. I think that uh, this uh, 24th of February 2022 really uh, changed the mindset of uh, so many leaders in the world, either female or men. And uh, um, I think there is uh, so many lessons learned uh, that those leaders, or all our, all we all leaders, have to take with us from um, uh, this uh, date. I, I personally flew from Munich to Brussels, from Brussels to Kiev. I was in Kiev on uh, the night of uh, 24th of February when this uh, war uh, started, and I uh, really uh, lived together with Ukrainians and felt together with Ukrainians uh, what it didn't mean uh, or. Uh, when uh, your capital was um, attacked by aggressive forces which were gathering next to your borders already more for more than a year. Uh, so um, what's going to happen the next? It's very hard to say. I think that no one has this uh, golden key to say what's going to happen, how, it's gonna, how this war is going to end. But uh, definitely I share this uh, point of view that um, we should not have another frozen conflict. Uh, definitely, Ukraine has right to get back its uh, territories and uh, sovereignty over the whole territories of Ukraine, including Crimea. And uh, I truly hope that uh, all democracies continue to pay attention how this war evolves and, of course, uh, give support to Ukraine. So, but I would like to come back also to uh, female leaders question yes. shall or it's gonna be uh, we why don't we finish and then we'll okay. come we'll come back because we we, we do want to hear about that too uh, Estonian Prime Minister is a woman and the same is uh, for uh, other Baltic states uh, what I want to say that in our Nordic Baltic region of Europe it is quite common to have female leaders uh, and I truly hope that it's going to be normality for the next generation as well. At the moment, I checked the statistics, there is about 21% uh, of uh, uh, governmental leaders, they are female. Uh, at the same time, half of the population is female. Um, but uh, in spite of that, of course, there is not everything so brilliant in Estonia or in our neighborhood. There is a huge uh, gender gap, there is still uh, very high number of um, gender-based uh, violence. And uh, this is one of the topics which I truly hope that the uh, next generation has not to face. Um, I just read that uh, economists carried out a study in 2020 that 85% uh, of uh, female face uh, uh, violence uh, or harassment while acting online. I think that is uh, a terrible number. And I truly think that this is something that we all have to um, take care of and, uh, and try to fight against it because I think that every woman uh, online has to be as safe as offline. So thank you. Thank you. It's a very important point. We hear that a lot.